my story is about some characters who came to Aotearoa on a vaka from Hawaii. They're kiore, Pacific rats. Kiore whispers. Shushia nohi, the two legs will hear you. It's okay, Puku, I'll be fine. Doof. Nohi didn't see it coming. A net the two legs used for catching the wet ones with wings enveloped him. I didn't want to watch as the two legs shoved him into the cage, made from hanging vine with others of our kind. Puku! He squeaked to me. Help! But I couldn't do anything to help him. The two legs might be slow and clumsy, but they're also bigger and more powerful than us. I grabbed a piece of talo in my mouth and scampered off. I squeezed myself into a hole, back down below. I smelled him before I saw him. Up was twice my size and is the leader of our pack. He sniffed the food hanging out of my mouth and cuffed me with his big paw. The talo dropped. Once he had had his fill, he turned his backside towards me and kicked the leftovers into my face. Where's that dream I know he? Captured by the two legs. That's one less to feed. He was talking about my brother. We've been on this moving island for more than a dozen nights now. At first it was weird. An island made of dead trees with a huge leaf that catches the wind and travels the great salty vi. It slides up a wall of water then down the other side. But we're used to it now. This is the way it has always been. We, Rati Kyore, have always travelled with the two legs. First on the land, now on this moving island. The two legs waste a lot of kai. My mum said that's why we follow them. They're walking kai baskets. We kiore sleep below, out of sight during the day. Night time is our time. One night when me and Nohi were up top, we heard a loud roar. It came from the great salty vi. It wasn't just one voice. There were many roars. It was deafening. The two legs were all looking too. One of them had a large shell and blew into it to make a sound like the sea. Then we saw it. A ginormous, wet, slick, smooth mountain of black flesh rising from the deep, dark, salty vi. A huge spray of water shot out of the top of its head. All this time, one of the two legs was making a chanting sound in their way of speaking. When he made his last sound... All the other two legs called aloud. Taikie. They didn't even notice us. Bro, says Nohi. There's something greater than the two legs even. The two legs are just like us. Hearing Nohi talk like that worried me. Nohi is different from other kyore. He's got these ideas. Earlier, he brought all this coconut here down below and started twisting it with his front paws as if it were a long rat's tail. When he started tying it to my tail, I had no idea what he was trying to do. Run, Puku, run. What for? So I can test my deer. I got so far before he yanked me back. Nohi, this isn't the nicest feeling having you pull my tail off my butt. You'll thank me sometime. Yeah, right. The next day there was a big haka up above. The two legs were yelling at each other. We could hear it all down below. It had been a calm, peaceful night, and the morning had been nice too, but not anymore. The great salty vi was raging at this island that moves. I could feel that we were going around and around and deeper into the throat of the tanifa. All of us kiore below were awake. Puku, I've got an idea. Nor he and his ideas. He pulled out the twisted coconut hair tail and tied it to my tail. He wrapped the other end around himself tight. Out came another coconut hair tail, which he tied down here below, then to his own tail. We're going up. Bro, we never go up above when the sun is in the sky. Trust me. Up above, out in the open, I could barely hear my own squeaks. The wind was wailing. The island was all over the place, creaking. One of the two legs was crouching, not far away from me. He too had a tail wrapped around his waist that tied him to the island. 
Was this where Nohi got his ideas from? The two legs? A mountain of great salty vi crashed over us all. I was swept off the edge. I felt a tug at my tail. Ouch! Looking behind, I saw Nohi dragging me back towards the hole. Doof! The two legs were slammed over onto the surface of the island. Jumping up onto his two legs again, he called to the great salty vi, to the roaring wind. I do not understand the way the two legs speak, but I could feel the fury of the wind soothed by his voice. I could feel the rage of the great salty vi, calmed by his spirit. Nohi and I scampered back down below. Puku, did you see? Did you feel the power of the two legs? He's a god. I must go to him. Don't be a fool, Nohi. You know what the two legs do to us. It's been a few nights since my brother Nohi went up on deck, looking for his god. I stick my head up above the hole and hear him call to me. He and another kiore are the only ones left in the cage made from hanging vine. Nohi has an idea. They take turns gnawing away at the tail that binds shut the entrance to the cage. I gnaw at the tail from the outside. The cage opens. We quickly hongi, but the smell of the two legs is strong. We scram. They come after us, but the two legs are clumsy. We are about to flee down the hole when Apu's head rises from below. You got us some kai? No, you can't come down here. I've had enough of your bullying. I can't believe what Nohi is saying. He's challenging Apu, the meanest kiore around. He takes a swipe at Apu, then retreats. Apu takes a bait and charges Nohi, who rolls out of his way. Caught off balance, Apu rolls forward and lands behind us, where the two legs are waiting. Doof! We never see Apu again. The next rising of the sun, we hear a lot of noise above. I sneak up for a nosy. The two legs are all excited. Their front paws are stretched out and they are looking toward a long white cloud. <laughs>